everybody, it's me, Sean, Mr. T. How are you? Hanging out here, making the best of the cold weather today. I don't know where you guys are, but here in New England, we are talking about negatives. That's right. It's supposed to be like last night. Uh, I wasn't at the game, but up in Buffalo, New York, it was minus five with the wind chill. Ooh, yikers. But so today we're going to talk about the uh, successful web webinar, uh, successful webinar for Medicare. That's what we're trying to say. I know I'm getting a little tongue tied right now, trying to read little side notes I got on the side here and trying to get together for you guys. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to run through this to see how well I know my slides and if I can make sure that you guys are interacting along with me, which would be fantastic. So if you do see something that is either a typo or it doesn't make sense with the combination uh, of things going on, let me know and then I could regroup. So first thing of all, uh, let me get my screen shared so we could see what's going on here. I wanna make sure that you guys can see what's going on. Here we go, there's not multiple screens today. So let me jump on and get this started so we could all see it together. Start with the current slide and there you go. I'm gonna get myself, you guys don't see this, but I'm gonna move myself up a little bit since, oops, unless that happens and then it actually changed to the next slide. Thank you very much. So it looks, well, you know what? I'm gonna put this up here. Anyways, I know what to say. So as you can see right here, uh, we are talking about going backwards to back where we were. You like that, huh? It's the morphing, I know. It's good stuff there. So first off, hi, I'm Sean. I am your Medicare insurance broker here in uh, the US, primarily focused in the Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Florida area. So I've got a little background in all the different spots. But today we're gonna to talk about Medicare webinars and how to make them successful, make sure that people interact and really just know how to uh, be part of the show and not feel like, like it's just a big talking head and not looking for people to go along with you. So first off, give me a hands up, thumbs up, whatever you wanna do, yes, no's, whatever. Let me know if you guys are already in the states of Connecticut, Massachusetts, or Florida. I'm only asking because I know that if you're in other areas, I've got connections all over the country that if you are looking for someone, I can forward your names to a person that I respect and that I would definitely have no problem doing my own insurance through them. So just throwing that out there, I wanna make sure that you guys are comfortable with whoever is chosen. So let me see what I got here. Okay, actually, yeah, it's not bad. There's a few people in uh, a lot of the different states. Uh, Connecticut, sounds great. I see Hartford. Uh, Massachusetts, I see um, Springfield, uh, Worcester, which <laughs> I'm only kidding, kidding people. It's Worcester. Worcester, if you're from the Boston area. And then down in Florida, I see some people are in St. Pete. I see some people in St. Lucia. Wow, there are a lot of people over. And then, of course, we've got all over the country. I see some people, oh, it looks like Michigan. I see some, oh, there's some people in South Dakota. Hey, how's the weather out in your area? Oof. I know it's been some crazy weather out there. So give me a give me a shout out from you guys in all the different countries and states rather. And let me know what your temperature is today. I know that uh, it's the winter right now for me. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this uh, as a recorded basis, uh, I apologize for people saying that it's like negative three or something when you're at 80 degrees. So congratulations on 80s. I love that stuff. So Moving on. So this is what we're talking about. Uh, successful webinars. Uh, the first thing you want to talk about is your pregame because you don't just show up and expect that people know you're waiting for them. Everything's going great. Oh yeah, this is great. La la la. And then you notice that no one showed up. Basically, why is that? Because you didn't do your homework. You didn't get people started. So they have no idea what's going on. So the best thing to do is to invite everywhere in anywhere. So what that means, it's going to be a Zoom call. It's going to be some kind of presentation, either from Facebook or, or from YouTube or a link to a Zoom conference that you're going to have. So 
make sure that you're giving everyone that you know or any kind of traffic that you can get to the opportunity to actually see the presentation live because you don't want people saying oh i didn't hear about this when it's like oh i forgot to advertise oh i forgot to do this so just give yourself enough time if you are doing just a generic webinar like um you know the abcs or the alphabet soup of medicare um, that would be great but if you are looking to do something that is more um, insurance carrier specific you're gonna have to make sure that you uh, link up with the calendar event on their site so that they are aware that you are doing something for them and they'll be able to promote that for you next Use a video teaser and not only an image. What does that mean? So if you're doing any kind of uh, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, just having a picture of you and saying, come to my video, come to my webinar, duh, 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 what is that going to do for you? Sure, people will see it, but will they remember it? This way, if you've got some action going, you got some video going, it could be you, it could just be your voice, but have some kind of B-roll running in the background with some some information, you have some people that you found on some of the video sites that you can use their clip art from, their video clips from, just seeing people move around, you know, someone in the senior community. That's what you need. You just need something going on. And if you can get some light music to add to it, and it doesn't have to be more than 15 seconds. It just has to say, we're talking about Medicare today. It's a webinar. Come join us. Here's the date. Look below. Here's the invite below. But it's all about having some action going. And it's not just about people seeing you and saying, okay, next. You want to make sure that people understand what's going on. And it's not just sitting there and, you know, people just go right by you. Also, understand the software you're using. So just like with this, you know, I made sure that I have Zoom. I made sure that I purchased the Zoom that I'm using only because I plan on going over a half hour. If you plan on doing less, you could stick with the free software, which will give you 30 minutes up to 40 minutes. Usually they'll throw a little 10 minutes extra in there just so you can wrap it up. But still, if you just plan on having to start with, sure, start with that. Have a few minutes, you know, just have something you could start with. And then if you have to, you know, if it gets close to your 30 minutes, just start telling people like, you know, we're going to close up shop. Please email me any questions you have and I'll get back to you. So that you're not just stuck and people are like, oh, where'd they go? I can't believe that it just shut off on us in the middle of the call. You don't want it ever happening. And you also want to understand all about the software. Like for instance, I said Zoom. So Zoom has these screen shares. They've got, you know, the recordings, the videos. I know that a lot of people have been on calls with Zoom, but do they actually use Zoom in their own businesses or are they just people that look at things? So for instance, let me ask, who uses Zoom? Uh, give me a little shout out. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me yes. If you don't use Zoom, what are you using? Using a Webinar Pro? Using you know whatever else is out there? Software Pros? There's a bunch of stuff out there. Or are you just using like uh, Facebook Live or YouTube Live? Those all work too. Like I said, you just want to understand how the software works so that everything is working. So you got okay. Most people are using Zoom. I know that you know the school systems have that for their for their students between that Google Classroom. So I know that that stuff's out there. So you probably have that for your kids, but are you using it for more than just watching? Are you actually using it so you know the software? Do the tech check before you start. So for instance, one of the things that I was doing beforehand, I started here, was I did the mic check. I did that on my own. I did a few times, but one of the things that I wanna make sure that you know when you first start, you ask people, can you hear me? How's the sound? Can you see me? Is the video running? So I always laugh. I see people that'll say that their video or their software stalled. Can you still hear me? But if they can't hear you, how do they know that, that you're saying that, right? So also use the chat box, you know, make sure that you're in there saying, just checking in. Can you hear me fine? Because, uh, you know, some people might be saying that, that the that they froze, maybe your picture froze. Doesn't mean that it's not happening to the person speaking like myself, but it may be it's someone's internet, they're in their car, they went through a dead spot or something. So the show could still be going on. So that's why you wanna make sure that you let people know that, oh, I'm sorry that yours went down, but please 
keep an eye out. Uh, you may need to restart. You may need to just wait. It's going to come through. But always check the video and the audio minimum and make sure that you could be seen. I mean, I've got some ring lights going here. I've got a microphone up close. So if you can hear, it's great. If you think that I should be moving my mouth or the microphone over here or over here, you know, let them know. They want to know these things. I mean, I want to know. I want to make sure that people can hear me and that you don't hear people just checking out on you. You start watching the numbers drop from your participants because they're like, oh my God, I can't believe that, you know, people are just dropping off. Why are they dropping off? Then you realize that you're on mute the whole time. So have someone help you early on when you're still in your intro stage, the pregame stage, that's when you want to make sure you check on these things because that's the worst when you find out you went through an hour and there was nothing recorded, right? Okay. Know the right times for your time zones. That is key because you don't know where people are coming from, right? Like I said, I saw people from San Diego coming in. I saw Wisconsin. I, I'm from New England. So I got the East Coast. I got the West Coast. Got Mountain, Central, Pacific, all these crazy things, right? So when you tell someone on your pregame saying, I'll be live at 12 o'clock, stay tuned. And then they come on and your show was 12 o'clock Eastern. So they came in at 12 o'clock Pacific and they've already lost the entire show. So they're getting things. And you don't want them getting upset over that. So always have, when you're sending your invites out, make sure you let them know it's Eastern time. And if you could, you know, in your head or even look on Google to figure out the different time zones and how that works, let them know, you know, yours is three hours different. Yours is an hour, yours is two hours, whatever it could be. At least give them the option to know exactly when the show starts in their time zone. That's key. I've heard people talk about that a lot. Have you guys ever had that problem to you, happen to you that people have talked about it? It's crazy. So does it make sense to everybody? Give me a yes or no in the, in the chat box there. Let me make sure that I'm not losing anyone. Uh, I'm going to save all the questions till the end because it'll save me time because a lot of times as we go along, people are ahead of my slides and I want to make sure that everything is answered. I don't want people to think that I'm blowing them off but maybe two or three slides coming up will help you find out exactly the answer you wanted. So here's one that I love, power poses and power songs. So what am I talking about? If you've ever done public speaking before and you're going on stage, you always have that little nerves going in, right? So what I talk about is the power pose. And the power pose to me is almost like when you've got that air guitar going, you know, rah, 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 and you get all no, get, get pumped up and the crowd's going like in your head and you got your arms up. That's your power pose. You wanna make sure that you are pulling all that energy into the front of you, feeling the juice, making sure that everything's going crazy like you want it to be, right? So power pose. And then what goes with the power pose? The power songs. So in the chat box, let me know what you feel is a power song for you. For instance, for me, I like going, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm just crazy with the, and I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing words. I'm just going to kind of do the whole doo doo doos and da da das. Also, I go Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck ACDC is key for me. What do you guys have? Okay, I got um, I the Tiger coming up. That's a good one too. Bum, bum, bum. you know so you get that whole getting all juiced up and you're feeling it because you know you don't want to be coming in like really plain like like for instance you don't want like some john denver song coming up as your power song right you, or you know something from um you know whoever but you know you don't want some slow song you don't want some song that's kind of like like slow and get you kind of thrown off so definitely look for something that really pumps you up. Think about it. If you were going to the gym, right? And you were at that moment where you want to start running quicker on the treadmill, or you feel like, you know, you need to just pump up the energy, get your heart going, get that cardio going. What song would you choose for that moment? Right. And that's what I'm talking about. You want that power song. You want the thunderstrucks. You want the welcome to the jungles. You want, Bam, 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 ding, dong, rah, 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 you know, something that really gets you going. So think about those. That's where I think is really where you get yourself started. You really want to get that juice flowing. You want to make sure that your energy is high because if people see your energy low, they're going to say, boy, this guy's boring or this girl's boring, whoever it could be. 
but you don't want the boring people going. You want the power going, right? Always do full dry runs. That is a big moment that I did not do up front. So I would always just go through the first slide and say, okay, here you go. Welcome to my seminar. This is the, 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 the. but then all of a sudden you realize that you spoke over half the slides that you had coming up later on. So it was like, okay, I already talked about that before. Okay, I already talked about that one before. So that's not what you want. You want to be able to say, hey, this is fantastic stuff. And you talk along with the slide. So you talk as things are moving off the screens. You're not stalling. You're not reading the slide saying, when did I put that one in? I must have added that one. Someone else added that one. I don't know what you're talking about, but that's not what I want to do. So always do the full dry run, record it, let you, let you figure out exactly where you're stalled, what information like the slides, you know, caught you, made you stutter, made you say, oh my God, I forgot what this meant. So never go too crazy with your slides. As you can see with my slides I got so far, and I'm only going the pregame so far, that it's just one bullet at a time. You don't want to go too crazy and have people like reading ahead and they get bored. One bullet moment at a time, that bullet point gets it done. Don't read the slide completely. I mean, always do a full dry run is not reading the slide. Reading the slide is if it's like four or five sentences that the person's like, I could have just read the hand. I didn't need this. So full dry run, key. Have a backup plan. That is also something that you never know what's going to happen. For instance, one thing that I ran into at one point was middle of my presentation. I'm cruising. I got pumped up. I got everything going. And then I lose my power at my house. All of a sudden, the show stopped. No one had anything. I went dark. It's like, wow, how did that even happen? Wow, why didn't I even think about this as something? So one of the things that I would suggest, now this is just a suggestion, that you have someone else on the presentation to help you along. So for instance, have the slides waiting for them so that if something does happen, you know, at least they can take over. Hopefully, um, since it's only your power, the Zoom call is still hopefully going. This way, they can just like jump in and say, well, let me take over and I can at least talk about what's left until Sean comes back or whoever comes back. So as you're going along, it's like, God, I can't believe that I didn't have a backup plan. Or what you could also do is have your slides um, going to be sent out to them at the end of the presentation so they're not reading ahead of time. So let them know up front saying, you know what? I got a backup plan. My plan B is that in case something happens, please, please, please check your emails at the time the show's over. My slides will be available to you to look at. So, or even have a link to something that all the presentations are there. So, you know, don't worry if something happens. If, you know, you always say you, you might have some issues with your internet. Or of course, I could always have internet issues because you never know what's going on in the world. Maybe the power outage, maybe a hurricane, maybe someone hit the pole that my, my internet came in on. So that's something to always be careful with. So have that backup plan. So don't just run it and then you know have your automated email waiting for you saying, hey, how did you enjoy that? And then you get all that bad negative press back. Who knows if they're going to send that to someone else. And then you may lose some serious business when you're trying to do your best to make this all happen. You know, So be careful with that. Using video teasers, I already talked about that one. See, this is what I mean. I'm talking about fixing my slides. Everyone is human. So this one must have been a duplicate that I made because I like to slide down, making duplicates. We'll see what happens when we pull that one to the side. And that was the last one. So I'm glad that was the last. I could easily go back and just chop that one off when I do this one again for whoever I do the presentation for. So pregame is done. One of the things with the pregame is you want to have some time up front to talk to people so that they know that it's like, okay, it's dead air. It's like, are they on? Is anyone on? It's like, so what I like to do is I like to set up something like a timer that actually plays prior to uh, the actual presentation starting. So as a timer, I put it at five minutes. You don't need to go too crazy. Uh, you just want to have something there that people know that, the presentation is coming soon. You've got five minutes to get ready. You know, make sure you get your water, 
make sure you use the bathroom, make sure that when it starts, if I forget to tell you, put you know your phones on silent, uh, shut down anything else that you could get distracted by. If you could watch this when the kids are at school or at, you know sleeping or the dogs are outside, whatever, so that you could give your full attention to it. So this way, um, you know, you're locked in. And this is all stuff you do up front before the actual show. So stuff to think about. And then also you want to be able to get on there and just give people a hello. This is me. I'm Sean Condon. I'm your presenter for today on how to have a successful Medicare Medi Medicare webinar. And let me know who you are, where you're from. It's great to have people from all over the country. So these are things that I like to talk about so that people understand that, you know, it's like, okay, Okay, I know I'm in the right place. The Zoom link was right. It's not just a, a spot that's empty and I don't have to find out that I did a typo and find out that I'm in the wrong show. So this way people know it's you. So that's key that you start off with something good like that. So like I talked about, let them know what to expect. Here's what to expect. We're gonna be talking about Medicare. We're gonna be talking about the different parts of Medicare. So it's almost like your agenda that you're gonna be talking about here. So the people know what to expect. They know to expect questions will be answered at the end. Uh, if something comes up, you know, your questions will be emailed answered to you if we run out of time, because we have only a certain amount of time that this all happens and takes care of. I don't want to go over because I, I respect the time that you're giving me. And since you're here, I expect, expect people to listen but I don't want to go over too far. If I do, I apologize, but all your questions will be answered through email. You know, we could talk about having a quick little break in there if we need to. There's all kinds of things to think about. This one is key. I mean, I talk about this and I see it a lot when I'm watching different videos, different, even like if you're watching a TV show where they're doing an interview through Zoom, you get them talking their question. And then all of a sudden there's that dead air as they're waiting waiting for the question to finish. And you're like, why are they waiting? I already heard the question, but no, it's not that. There's actually a delay that happens when you are on an internet call like that. You don't notice it because usually you're just listening. But if you're talking to the person directly, there's actually a 15 second, 10 to 15 second delay between the question and the answer. So what I'd like to talk about with this one is that you know people are talking and what happens is like, for instance, when I ask you guys about where you're from, give me a yes or no, give me a thumbs up. You try to keep talking through that first piece so that people will finish it. But within that 15 seconds, you're still talking. And then finally, you're starting to get your answers coming in. So you're that, 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 that. oh yeah, there's someone from San Diego. Oh, there's someone from uh, Redmond, uh, Washington state, whatever, <laughs> I'm just making up stuff. But Keep the flow going so that, you know, there isn't that stall and people are just like, look at you. Oh, here's someone from Michigan. I love that you could do these kind of things, but you really got to understand that the delay is key and people should know that in case they haven't been part of this side of the shop and they just understand that all of a sudden nothing's going on. And it's like, oh, did it stall? Did, it, did something happen? And then you just come back, hey, here I am. I'm from Detroit. Oh, that's great. Thumbs up. Good deal. Hey. Okay, so interaction is key to success. You always want these people to understand that they are part of the show. It's not just about you being a talking head and not doing anything, but just talk, talk, talk. You wanna be able to understand that people are on your side. You want them to understand that the show is for them. It's not for you to talk. It's for them to ask questions. And if you interact with them, they're gonna feel more comfortable with you. And so that if, you have the opportunity to become their, their new broker. This is how it's going to happen. Because they're going to see you as a real human being. They're not going to see you as the lead generator or just the person, the public speaker that doesn't care because their head is, you know, thinking about their next BMW they're buying before they even have the money to do it. So with us, we like to show them that we're full service. You know, we'll talk to them. We'll, we'll let them know that we've got all these things going on and you are important just as much as everything else. So that's why you tell them, if you can't get to your question, we'll email you the answer so that you know that they're not just asking questions and then getting stalled out and no one gives them any kind of reaction to it. Let them know they're part of it. Ask the questions, answer them, using their names to answer them too. So it's like, oh, thanks, John. 
appreciate the question. So, oh, and Sally, you know, it's like, why is it always Johnny, Sally, Billy? You know, it's like all these like old school names. It's never like, you know, something new age. But anyways, besides the questions, let's get back to the slides here. Just say, uh, don't hide behind the slides. Basically what that means is I understand people aren't comfortable in front of the camera, but just think of it as you talking to people because depending on what kind of um, presentation software you're using will depend on what actually looks like. For instance, I could have the gallery going along the top here. You guys can watch everything going on. I'll, you'll be able to talk to you. And then I'll see people's faces so that it's not like I'm just talking to myself into a mirror. This way I see faces in front of me so I could be talking to you and I'll see the interaction and I'll be like, you know, even jumping in if you see something great going on or always a good one is if you see someone sneeze, make sure you say bless you. So then, you know, bless you, Steve, you must have the allergy season going on. You know, something, something to show that, you know, you could see people on the screen. You know, I get it when it's in gallery mode, there could be hundreds of faces. When you've got the, the side by side views going, you might have three or four. So you're not going to see those other people. So just let them know that, you know, that they're important to you and you want to talk to them directly. So like I said, if, if you're uncomfortable in front of the camera, I understand. Try to get away from that. You know, if you can't do it right away, at least talk to them, at least get them going and understanding that, you know, you're trying your best. You want to talk to them and you're still interacting with them. So even if they don't see your face, which I, I always have a hard time with not seeing my face on some things or, you know, it's a different story if you're drinking or eating at the same time, but um, talk to them, let them know that you see them, let them know that you know their name because hopefully they've got their names on the bottom of their presentation view. A lot of things like that. You want to make sure that they know that they're there. So if you're hiding behind the slides, don't do it every time, or at least if you're going to do that, at least introduce yourself with your camera on and then, talk and then at the end bring your camera back on so at least they understand that you are a person um, that you are trying your best to get on camera as much as possible you never know i mean some people i get it you know asking if slides make sense is such a big thing i know that especially with medicare there's so much confusion over there you know you've got all the aeps the o the oop you know me's you know aeps whatever they are you know there's so many acronyms out there. We all know. It's like, you know, trying to talk about part B in the donut hole. It's like, how does that work? It's like, what do you mean? It's four different prices or could be four different prices this year. And I'm in the donut hole. What's a, why are they talking about a donut hole? So, you know, talk about things, make sure that things make sense to people. And that's when you're going to start looking at it. It's like, okay, it looks like there's a lot of confusion. I see a bunch of names here that say, can you go over that again? Let me go over it again. I want to make sure you guys are clear before I move on to the next slide. It's very simple. You know, it's like sometimes when you're trying to do the math, it's kind of like funky where you got to talk about, you know, if you're late by five years, it's this amount, add that to the top every month, it's this, you know, so, you know, just make sure that you're not losing people because if you lose someone, they're just going to disappear on you and there's not going to be a chance of that being a potential client for you. Clear call to action. What does that mean? Clear call to action. You know, if you've ever been on any of these calls with direct salespeople, you know that it's like, okay, at the end of the show, here's the action. You're going to buy my, uh, you know, software or my services, and I'm going to give you $100 off the major price. So you got, you got to act now. But, you know, we're talking about services. We're talking about things that we don't charge for because the insurance carriers cover our fees. And our commissions come from that. So what do you do about it? So clear call to action. It could be something simple as call me. Here's my number. You could email me. You know, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call or email me. I want to make sure that you are totally satisfied by all these slides and you understand what's going on. But if you're not, you know, let's talk. Let's set up an appointment. You know, you could have a Calendly uh, also attached here. You could have a link that comes up in the chat box saying, if you have issues, here's my email, here's my phone, here is uh, the calendar link so that you could set up something right now so we could talk as soon as possible. Maybe some people don't like talking on the 
are, um, you know, giving some of their information out right there on the webinar. So people see all the stuff, you know, maybe they don't like that. So that's why you give them the options to talk to you personally at a different time. Recap. Recap is just a simple summary. It's like, okay, this is what we talked about today. We talked about 101. We talked about the A, B, and D. And then we brought in the C and the supplements and the Medigaps and prescriptions and donut hole. You know, go through the list. Bring it up on your screen again. Give your bullet list together and let them know that these are the things. That if I missed anything, let me know because I'll go over it again. If you don't see anything out there, and then you just jump onto your next slide, your, your confirmation information is like, okay, well, here it is. Here's my information. I told you that if you waited till the end, you'd get all my information. Here it is. Tell me that you were on the call. You know, we'll talk, make sure that you understand what's going on and that everything works out fantastic. It's as easy as that. Uh, how long should your webinar be? You know, it varies. I mean, I talk to people. Uh, it could be, you know, it depends on how long you want to go, right? You don't want to be saying that, oh, Sean said it has to be an hour. I'm only at 35 minutes and I ran out of information. What am I going to do? Just, uh, you know, let's just, let's go over it again. No, if it doesn't fit, I mean, it's your company. It's your presentation. It's your webinar. Make it as long as you think is comfortable. I wouldn't go any more than 45 to an hour though, because you don't want to lose people. Um, especially if you're interacting with them and it depends on what time you're doing your shows. A lot of people say that if we talk about Eastern time, you've got the people at three o'clock or you got the people at eight o'clock. So then, you know, if they're at three West coast is at noon, you know, so you've got time. Other ones are at like five. So they're getting out of work or you've got the people at night, a lot of things. So figure out what makes sense to you, but always give time at the end for your questions. So if you're running early, I mean, just let the questions like just flow. If you don't have any, one of the things that um, I'll give you as a pro tip right now, I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to give you a pro tip. Have some questions ready to go. So then in case there are no questions, this way you've got a few questions ready to run that you know are the frequently asked questions that you hear. So this way, at least if people are like, oh, I'm not going to ask any questions. I don't want my name out there. Maybe these are the questions they're going to ask anyways. So that is big. So have those questions really. It's like, oh, yeah, I got a question here from, um, from Wilma and Fred. <laughs> so they asked the question about, you know, how much does it cost if I retire early or, you know, whatever it could be. So these are things that at least you've got questions ready in the can to get going. If they're not there, then you're going to be like, okay, I guess that's it. No more questions. I'll talk to you guys again. Bye. That's not going to help anybody, right? So have some questions ready to go. Run the webinar twice. What does that mean? So basically what that means there is, you know, run it completely two different times, schedule it twice and do them live twice. So this way you've got people that couldn't make the first one, could make the second one. So you kind of make it different times, different days, seeing which one you think is the most common time for people that are going to be home watching something on their phones or on their laptops can actually get in there and talk and listen to these things. So that's kind of big. You want to make sure that you get run it twice so that it's not just like, oh, I can't believe how bad that went. Or, oh, it was, this is the best thing ever. And then you don't get many responses back. This way you give them two times. Maybe they're going to watch it twice. Maybe it's going to be that the person is ready to go. Oh, no, I'm stuck in my car. I don't have everything going. I can't be listening to it now and, and watching it. So I'm going to take the next one. So something to think about. Twice. And then here's the big thing that has always saved me is having someone else watch the chats for you if it's possible. If you're writing solo, I get it. That's why you want to make sure you let them know that the questions will be answered at the end because you're trying to focus on the slides. So you don't want to keep getting distracted and waiting for the end because some of those questions could be answered at the end for other questions. But if you have someone that is available for you that you trust that is part of your team, have them be on the seminar too. have them look at the chat box in the webinar and just say, hey, can you watch these for me? You know, the answer is just like I would, or just make sure that, oh, yeah, you know, 
That's going to be coming up at the end. Wait for Sean to answer that, you know, when it gets up to that slide or great question. Here's Sean's email address. Here is his phone number. Call him directly. Or if it's something that you know the answer to, you know, you're the person that's helping you. Just on the, yeah, part A, a is for hospital. Part B is for doctors, you know, whatever it could be. But always give them that chance that if you have someone available for you, and then if they're going to do seminars or webinars, you could do the same back to them. So it's like a win-win for both of you. Okay, rounding it up, post-game. Post-game is after you thank them and you've got everything going. You want to reach out to them from the information that they provided you to the show. Basically, if it's an email, just thank them for being part of the show. It was wonderful having you here. If you have any questions, let me know. And, you know, want to give that a couple of times so that, you know, you are doing different touch points. If you got a phone number, give them a call saying, hey, thanks again. It was so great to have you here. Um, just want to let you know that coming up, I want to make sure that you are all set for when annual enrollment starts. So if you want, let's set up something on the calendar now so that we can review your plan. There's no cost to you. It's all about just making sure that everything that is out there, you know that that benefit is available to you if it is. Because we know that, you know, people get into these things with, oh yeah, uh, Joe Namath called me. So I called Joe back and now I don't know what I've got and now I'm stuck with it. It's like, we all get it. We all hear it. But, you know, it's, <laughs> it's horrible that people get all confused with it. But at the same time, it's advertising for us to help people get back into the group. So think about it, phone, email, don't leave them hanging. If they came to the show, please don't lose them. So wrapping it all up. First of all, thank you for coming to the video, watching this webinar. It was great to have you guys with me. I hope this was helpful for you to get involved in webinars. I know that people are like, oh, I'm not into these things. No one will ever show. Well, there's ways to make that happen. And I gave you one pro tip, but if you want the rest, what you need to do, my call to action is find me on the internet. Find me on Facebook. Find me at Ageless Insurance on my Facebook group. And here is where we're all going to get together and get the answers together and figure out how to get these webinars working. So I want to be part of my team, not insurance team, unless you want to be, that's of course all up to you, but team meaning that we're going to help each other out getting these webinars done. A lot of great people out there. A lot of people do a lot of great things. Uh, my thing is making sure that the webinars go smooth. All the pieces are together. Uh, you could talk to other people about what to put on those slides. I could do that as well. But today we're just talking about how to make sure it's a successful Medicare webinar by interacting with people. And that's the key. So that's me. I'm Sean, Mr. T calling it a day. One more pro tip for you though. Let me tell you the pro tip that I gave you earlier was going to be this one. So I'm giving you a number two pro tip. Now this is big. Here's the pro tip. Time everything out as in, you know, that when you get to the third slide, make sure that in your head, you know, to interact with the audience, make sure that you're bringing up something for these people to know that you're still there, you're still live, you're still talking to them, and that you're still saying that they're important and thank you for still being on the call. So for instance, if, if this was the slide that was up, bonus pro tip. Okay, what do you want for a pro tip? What do you think is a pro tip? In the chat box, let me know what you think is a pro tip. What do you use for a pro tip? Chat box opens up, people are talking about it, and it's like, okay, great, here's one. What John uses all the time for his pro tip is that he wears a red hat. That's his bonus tip because he likes red because red is one of the colors for Medicare. Great, thanks, John. Appreciate that. I want you guys all to think about that, what John just said, because John is really on the ball if he's thinking of how these things all work. So that's how it works. It's just a matter of making sure that you don't forget to talk to the audience. So that's your bonus tip for today. I am going to stop my sharing, come back to you live 
And once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm glad you guys came by. This is what it's all about. It's all about finding other ways, especially where, you know, webinars, we love them. You can't do many seminars still. I mean, things are opening up, of course, but do you want to do a seminar where the maximum people that they allow in the conference room is 10 when the room holds 400? And if, if you get as many as you can in that room, that's great, but you don't want that max number to be low. You want to be able to open it up to everyone because what happens when someone says that I'm going to go, five people say they're going to go out of the 10, don't show, right? So now you've got five people and you lost three seats that could have been filled by people that actually want to be there. So that's what I'm saying. Webinars are the way that the future is. We talked about it. And a lot of times, as we know, you know, some of the seniors that we are, you know, part of our community that we basically are attempting to ensure aren't always out there. They, they don't want the coves. They don't want the vids. You know what I'm saying? So they like to work from home, even if, it's something on their phones or on an audio, something. Sometimes it's just a matter of, of making sure that they can connect with you through the internet. So that's me, Sean, Mr. T. Let me know from the comments below how you thought this went. I mean, I've got so many pro tips that I couldn't give them all to you because, you know, I got to save some stuff for the, for the Facebook group. But still, this was great stuff. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm so blessed to have you guys as part of the Medicare world that I'm part of. Thank you again. I'll talk to you guys soon. It's me, Sean, Mr. T from Aegis Insurance. You can get in touch with me on Facebook or email me, sean at agelessinsurance.com or even give me a call. It's 203-633-4010. Great. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.